happy little games. Growing up in a bowling alley, it was such a treat when Saturdays rolled around. Not only did I get to roll a few frames, but I also got to check out the latest and greatest arcade games. It was in this bowling alley where I fell in love with beat-em-ups. There was nothing better than teaming up with a friend or simply playing with yourself as you kicked and punched the various nefarious bad guys. Today, we are going to take a look at an arcade game that didn't get a whole lot of love back in the day, but regardless, it was a fun little romp through an apocalyptic New York City. The name of the game, depending on what part of the world you currently occupy, was Crude Buster, or Too Crude, or Too Crude Dudes, and it was released by Data East in 1990. What popular beat-em-up is this game a spiritual successor of? So crack your knuckles and get ready to fight, because this is the history of Crude Buster. The year is 1990, and Data East has a major presence in arcades and homes all over the world. The company either created or distributed over 120 arcade games from 1978 to 1997, and that's not counting the various home console releases or pinball machines either. No matter what type of game you were into, Data East had you covered. From bowling, to burger making, to capturing ghosts, and everything in between. Some of the arcade games they were known for included Midnight Resistance, Karnov, Heavy Barrel, Side Pocket, and Kung Fu Master among many, many others. Kung Fu Master was the first beat-em-up brawler to come along and companies have been cashing in on that formula ever since. Another beat-em-up from Data East that was a major hit was Bad Dudes, or, if you want to get technical, Bad Dudes vs. Dragon Ninja. This is a one or two player simultaneous side-scrolling beat-em-up in which President Ronnie has been kidnapped by the evil Dragon Ninja organization. It's up to you to rescue him, but only if you are a bad enough dude. You take control of either Blade or Striker, traversing areas as varied as a forest, on top of a moving semi-truck, New York City to the oh-so-nasty sewers down below. There are also bosses at the end of each level, including Karnov and a Wolverine ripoff. The game was a massive success and was converted to a number of home computers and consoles. When it comes to Crude Busters, the history is a bit convoluted. The game started out life as just another two-player beat-em-up, but halfway through development, the team decided to make it a semi-sequel to Bad Dudes, only adding more whimsical elements and a whole lot of nuclear fallout. The game clearly doesn't take itself too seriously from its comic book inspired word balloons to the various DC and Marvel ripoffs. Add in a second player as well as numerous interactive background objects and you've got one fun little game. Crude Buster was released in the arcades by Data East in 1990. As the story goes, in the year 2010, New York City has been destroyed by a nuclear explosion. Twenty years later, New York still has not recovered from the fallout and an organization known as the Big Valley have taken over the city. The government has enlisted two men to enter the ruins and defeat Big Valley. 
These men will be paid handsomely and not just in hamburgers either. It's up to you to defeat the various enemies and save the day. The game is a one or two player beat em up extravaganza that takes place across six levels which sees you set out into the mean streets of New York City using a number of objects against those dastardly evil doers. In the two years since Bad Dude stormed its way into arcades eating its fair share of hamburgers, the graphics have been given a significant upgrade. The large sprites, colors, and oh-so-smooth parallax scrolling look really good. You are given control of a couple of Schwarzenegger ripoffs who go by the code name Crude Buster. It's good to know that even in a post-apocalyptic future, Hulk Hogan vitamins are still available because your character is huge. The game is a standard scrolling beat-em-up with a couple of interesting ideas. Each level is littered with a number of items that you can pick up and use as a weapon. In previous non-crazy games in this genre, you could always count on the old faithful baseball bat and 2x4 to assist you. Where this game differs is not only the amount of items that can be used, but the variety of them. It's not unusual to pick up trash cans, girders, street lamps, billboards, cars, and even the second player or enemies if you can get close enough without taking a beating. With certain objects, you can either throw or use them as a weapon, and yes, that includes other characters. The controls are pretty standard with a button dedicated for attacking, one for kicking, and a dedicated button to grab things. You also have a jumping kick, which you will definitely need because this game is pretty tough. Thankfully, this is not a one-hit wonder type of game since it uses a tried and true energy bar with the more hits you take, the quicker you die. Certain enemies will jump on you and attack with your health slowly depleting. You have to wiggle your joystick back and forth to shake them loose. If you ever wanted to see a hunchback make sweet, sweet love to your leg, then this is the game for you. As far as defenses go, and honestly, who really played these types of games to block, you have a tuck and roll evade move. In addition to being able to lay the smack down on your opponents, there are also various obstacles in your way such as walls and boulders which you have to break down with your fists of fury. The enemy designs are also wild and wacky with your usual assortments of armadillos, a Quentin Tarantino Mad Bomber, Pyromaniacs, Cyborgs, Hunchbacks, enemies that unleash killer vomit along with a short, squat Santa Claus. The only thing jolly old Saint Nick is bringing this year is a heroin addiction thanks to the syringes he throws at you. It wouldn't be a day to east beat em up without a rabid dog attacking you, only this time they are mechanized so you don't have to feel bad about putting them down. It also wouldn't be a day to east game without some sort of <clears throat> inspiration being taken from other properties. The crude busters look like Hawk and Animal from the Legion of Doom. Graffiti on the wall clearly shows the Joker. The first boss looks to be based on Alice Cooper as opposed to Jake the Stink as others have reported thanks to his platform shoes and makeup. Two of the bosses appear to be based on Marvel villains Sabretooth and Rhino. Another reference to comic books are the action word balloons that pop up all over the game. In addition to the vast amount of enemies that are waiting to stop you, you also have to contend with a small tank which shoots out missiles as well as a flying bike. In between each stage is a cutscene where your character punches and kicks a power cola machine until one falls out. Clearly, this is not Roid Rage. There are six long stages in total with mid-level and end-level bosses. The first stage is the Streets of New York. Uh. 
the highway. Fallout. <laughs> Subway? And Big Valley HQ. The bosses you encounter are Heavy Snake, Master Reaper, Rhino Man. You're not so tough. Tiny Leo. You're not so tough. And the nail spider. The final level features a boss rush and a mighty morphing science ranger. If you are able to defeat the evil scientist, you are rewarded with a nice ending with some truly lovely, poorly translated dialogue to go along with it. The graphics are nice and detailed with lots of use of color. Sometimes the detail is a bit much, especially with all the graffiti. There are some cool visual effects for some of the levels, including the snow in Stage 4, as well as the flying tornado which drops debris all over the place. Your character is given a lot of personality as well as a number of different voice clips. 
This can be hit or miss because sometimes the music and sound effects are so loud it's hard to make out what your character is saying. It is funny to hear the Crude Buster singing Jingle Bells at the beginning of the fourth stage. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, catch! The controls, on the other hand, are a bit stiff and not quite as responsive as found in other games. That doesn't detract from the overall fun factor, especially in two-player mode. The Japanese version, aside from having a name change, also swapped levels 2 and 4 for some strange reason. Speaking of rip-offs, the soda machine showcased during the cutscenes was changed to a Budweiser machine. There was only one conversion and that was for the Sega Genesis in 1991. This is a very faithful conversion of the arcade original, although with a lot of the spit and polish having been removed. Everything from the arcade game has been included with a few alterations here and there. The character sprites are large but they are missing a lot of animation. The backgrounds themselves are very barren with most of the graffiti missing completely. Thanks to the limited Sega Genesis palette, the colors are a bit muted as well. For some reason, they took out the mushroom cloud during the opening cinematic. Psycho Santa now throws bombs instead of syringes. He's also had a wardrobe change thanks to his luscious purple duds. The cutscene that sees your character punch a soda can over and over until one falls out is now interactive in between each level. You have 30 seconds to dish out as much punishment as possible on the poor Power Cola machine. The sound effects and music are good, although it's missing 90% of the voice samples. The controls are still a bit stiff, just like they were in the arcade game, so if you were a fan of the original, you know what to expect here. Making matters worse is the iffy collision detection. The icing on top of the cake is that you only have three continues. You do have vending machines placed throughout the levels that you can punch and kick to your heart's content to give you a nice little jolt of caffeine. The horribly translated text from the arcade game has also been fixed. The game was included in the compilation disc Data East Arcade Classics. The game was also released under Johnny Turbo's arcade for the Nintendo Switch. And there you have it, my friends, the history of Crude Buster. There are some unique gameplay elements as well as a fun two-player mode. So if you ever have a hankering to pick up a car and throw it at your opponent, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.